Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis and this is my shop full of quadcopters. We also do 3D printer reviews, but today we're going to talk about probably one of the smallest 3D printers out there on the market, also one of the cheapest. Now a lot of people email me all the time and ask me about educational use printers. I have school teachers emailing me asking me what they can get for their class uh, and other people emailing me asking me what they could get for their kid, um, son or daughter. So I have the E3 Nano sitting here today. We're going to talk about this printer, how easy it is to set up out of the box. It's super small and super portable. It comes with one little tiny roll of PLA filament and we're going to test out some other filament here. This is some sort of higher grade bronze style PLA. We're going to do some low poly Fox prints here. I'm going to show you how those stack up next to some of the more popular printers out there on the market like the ANET E10 and also the popular CR10. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. We're going to try to get our first print going and I'm going to show you how easy it is to set this one up and get printing right away. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and grab that micro SD card out of the box that came in yours. Uh, and we're gonna make a folder on the desktop. Go ahead and copy everything from that micro SD card that came with your printer over to a folder on the desktop and save everything because you're gonna need this stuff for later. Now run the installer for E3D Nano software and go ahead and dump those files in the trash after you've done the installation. And we're gonna go ahead and open up a, a Fox file it's in Fox STL from thingiverse.com. They have a bunch of free models on there you can download to your heart's content. So now I have it open inside the software and right away I noticed that it was too big on the printer. It's, it's past the scale of the printer so you're going to need to scale this down a little bit. And it does have some issues with scale with this printer. So if you're using it for quad parts or something like that, it's gonna be kind of hard to get everything to the exact scale. Now for this Fox XTL or STL file, I was able to scale it down to 0.4 to get it close to 100%. So that's like six times scaled down, um, six clicks down, and that's, that's quite a lot. But we're gonna go ahead and go into the slicer now. And as a new person, don't worry about too much of this stuff. But if I come all the way up to the top, it shows you quality, speed, and infill right there. Those are the three main you're gonna worry about to begin with. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave everything the same, and we're just gonna go ahead and slice this since I scaled it down. And you'll notice that it does fill up and it's hollow inside. It also has a little support here and a little base on the bottom. Now over on the right hand side, if you wanna click and show you uh, the process of the print, you can do that. And on the very bottom, it's gonna show you how long it's gonna print. Now, it took like two hours to print this. We're gonna go ahead and save it to the micro SD card. Make sure that's the only file on the card. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out and you're gonna put it in the back of the printer. Let's go ahead and push it in. And on the front of the printer, go ahead and press print. And in a minute or two, once the nozzle heats up, it'll go ahead and start printing that brim around the edge. Now if you see something like this happen, this was my first print with it, go ahead and just try to get that out of the way. So that'll save you some headache when it finishes up this brim. And it's just gonna go all the way around. And what this does is it makes sure that the hot end is nice and hot and the fluid coming through the nozzle is gonna put down the print nicely. So you can see that little spool is working there. Just gonna spin it around here, let you guys get a different angle on it. And from above, it's working pretty good. It's a pretty industrious little printer. I, I found that it was fairly easy to set up. You also can use the USB cable that comes in the box with that, and you can plug it into the back, and you can print directly from the software, which is kind of cool. So now it's going, and like I said, this print probably took about maybe around an hour or so, but if you want to use larger filament, a larger spool, this is the regular size filament, and that's not going to fit on that original spool holder, but uh, you're going to have to use some other type of stand. Now, you can make your own with a piece of broomstick and a couple books and some masking tape if you want to, or you can get a professional one like this one. Um, you can get these on eBay pretty cheap. You can get various parts for uh, 3D printer filament holders. Now I have some different ver examples right here. This is the CR10, very popular 3D printer, prints wonderful prints, and the ANET E10 over on the right hand side. That one also does decent prints. So we'll go ahead and check this out. I noticed that it was kind of curling up on the edges. I noticed right away that I do see some curling right there on that brim. But you know what, that's going to be okay because that's going to let me get my 
tool, my scraper tool underneath this print to pop it off this bed a little easier. Now I would have liked to see that this thing came with some kind of glass bed or metal bed because it does have a plastic bed there as you can see, but that's going to be okay. And what was pretty wild is I can pick this printer up, move it around a little bit while it's printing. It really doesn't mind. It just keeps working. So now you can see that this is going to be hollow on the inside. Like I was telling you before, this is a, an infill. So I think it's set to 0.3, so 30% infill. And this basically lets you print a nice large scale print and it saves you filament by making the inside hollow. It also makes it much faster to print. So if you go lower, like 0.2 infill, you'll actually get a, a super fast print if you're looking to save time. You can also print 100% infill and you can have a really solid object if you'd like to do it that way. And we're getting there. We're almost done with this first print. Almost done. And it's actually pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this first print. See how precise it is, just doing the top of the ears. Look at that. This last little bit here. And we are finished with the first fox. Now we're gonna take this off and once you do that, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of hard to take it off with that little slice, uh, little plastic one they give you. Now you see that support in the front? We're gonna break that off and then we're also gonna break off the bottom of the brim. That's a really thin piece that just snaps off. I'll show you that here in a second. So now everything's off and uh, you could take a little piece of sandpaper to this and maybe just clean off some of the rough edges on it. But I'm pretty impressed with the first print. This is not bad because usually the stock filament that comes with a 3D printer is not the greatest. You want to go on Amazon or go on gearbest.com and get yourself some decent PLA. But judging from what I see here as in comparison to the other Fox STLs, like this, this gold one there, that's the CR10, and the one on the far right, this is the ANET A10. And that's, you know, it looks pretty, somewhere in the middle of both of those printers, which is kind of amazing for a $150 printer. So now we're gonna extract that. You push that little lever over to the right, and it's gonna heat up that nozzle and release this piece of filament. You can hear it there in the background and it's working to push it back out. Now you're gonna to have to put your hand on this and you're gonna to have to pinch that out. Once it's done, put it back in the center and go ahead and remove it. Now what I like to do to get it ready, the next time I'm gonna use it, just go ahead and snip off the end there. That way it's nice and clean when you go put it back in. You're gonna use your white again. Now we're gonna try out some bronze filament and I'm gonna push this down in there and push it down in until you feel it stop. Once you get it all the way down in there, you can push that little lever switch back the other way and then it's gonna heat up and it's also gonna start turning the motor. And you can see here, after about a minute of waiting, it's slowly going in. Now look at the hot end down on the bottom. You'll see it's coming out. Once it changes colors, once it goes from white to bronze, you can go ahead and stop that, put that little switch back in the middle and press start. And after a minute or so, It'll initialize and it'll start going across the, the bottom of the bed here for you. Now it's working on the first part of the brim across the bottom there, uh, also known as a raft. And it's printing a very, very thin raft on the bottom of this. Um, and, and generally rafts tend to be a little bit thicker, so you can see a little top view here. We should get a little bit better print with this particular filament. It's just a little higher grade. And this is 1.75 millimeters if you're looking for that. Now we can compare the ANET E10 and the CR10 low poly Fox to this one in about an hour's print time, but we're gonna speed this up for you. You can see that filament's working there to come in and out and it's retracting back and forth as it goes into the, the nozzle. There's really some pretty fine detail that we're seeing here on this print. It's not bad. Now, like I said, for educational use, this is actually pretty good because you don't have a lot of setup. You don't have to do any building on this. There's not a, a pile of bolts like some of the Delta printers. They just come with bolts and boxes and a bunch of steel posts. And they're, some of them are really difficult to build. So I like the simplicity of this one. 
I was printing with this one within about 15 minutes. Um, I just took it out of the box, looked at all the parts, plugged it in. You're going to need to go on Amazon.com and get yourself one of these little tiny converters, uh, EU to US converter, because mine did come with the EU version plug, but there might be a US version available. And you can see so far, this is actually not bad. This is a pretty decent print that it's doing. I'm kind of impressed. So this printer is actually somewhere in between the ANET E10 and the CR10. And, and for something that's this small and this cheap looking and this easy to, to start up, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Now we're all done with that bronze low poly fox and it looks pretty decent. Now you're gonna have to get yourself a better paint scraper to get these prints off. I used a metal scraper to get this low poly fox off because you can see there was no no bending on the edge of that brim this time. It didn't roll up on the edges so it made it impossible to use this to get this print off. It just would not come off with that. So use a metal paint scraper. You can get those at the, uh, at the hardware store. So I'm looking at both of these and this is the CR10 on the right and you know, you can tell it's not exactly like the CR10 print. There is definitely some, some banding going on and some kind of little bumps here and there. But this is not bad. So the E3D Nano is in the middle right here. You can see there's a little bit of banding, but it actually looks better than the one on the far left. Not quite as good as the one on the far right, but that's a $400 printer you're looking at on the far right. And the one on the far left is a $300 printer, so not bad for under $150. Uh, my final opinion on this is that this is, this is great for someone as a gift if they just want to try this out and not spend a whole lot of money to, to get into 3D printing. This is a really easy way and an easy setup to get into. I didn't think any of the parts that came with it were super high quality. Um, just to give you a little con there, it did feel kind of lightweight and cheap out of the box, but the results that I got with the prints, they're satisfying to me and um, I could just take a little bit of sandpaper and get some of that stuff off. You're going to have to clean up any type of 3D print anyway, but this is not a bad printer to consider. Thanks for watching guys.